Hello, and welcome back to Victoria's Educational Services, where I break down difficult concepts into easy steps. Our objective for today is to decompose fractions into sums of smaller unit fractions using tape diagrams. This lesson covers standards 4.nf.3b and 4.nf.4a, and is based on Eureka Math Module 5, Lesson 4. By the end of this video, you'll be able to break fractions into sums of smaller unit fractions using tape diagrams. Okay, let's get started. In our first example, we will decompose one third as the sum of unit fractions. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So our first step is to draw a tape diagram that represents one whole and then shade in one third. So here's my tape diagram. I'm splitting it into thirds and I'm shading in one third. Now we're going to break each third in half. So I'll change color so you can see it. And I'm doing kind of dotted lines so you can still see the original lines. Okay, so I broke each third in half. Now what fraction does each part represent? So if you count, you can see we now have one, two, three, four, five, six. So each one of those is equivalent to one sixth. Okay, so what can we say about one third and two sixths? We can say they're the same looking at the picture. So if they're the same, they're called equivalent fractions. We can tell because they take up the same amount of space in our tape diagram. So now let's write that as a number sentence. So we can write one third equals one sixth plus one sixth equals two sixths. Now we're gonna take it a step further. We're going to decompose each sixth into two equal parts on our tape diagram. So I'll change colors again so you can see. I'm breaking my sixth into two equal parts. Okay, so how many parts are in our one whole now? Well, if we count, we can see that we have 12 parts now. So each fractional part now represents one twelfth. So now let's think, how many twelfths equals one sixth? Well, look at our picture. Remember, our sixths are pink. I'm going to change colors to show you where our one sixth was so you can see it clearly. So if you're looking at our one sixth, you can see that there are two twelfths in that one sixth. Let's write a number sentence for how many twelfths will equal one third. We know that two twelfths equals one sixth, and we know that two sixths equals one third. So let's break this down. So we have one third equals one sixth plus one sixth. Now we can break that into even smaller fractions. So we're gonna be working with our twelfths now. So we can put that one third equals one sixth plus one sixth, and then one twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth. And I put parentheses around our, our two groups of twelfths to show that each one of those combines to make one sixth. So these two combine to make one sixth, these two combine to make one sixth, and as we know, there are two sixths, right, in our one third. Our last step is to write this as a multiplication sentence. So I'm going to change colors one more time so you can see it easily. So we have one third, I'm just gonna write it up top, so we have one third equals, and then we're going to do our parentheses. Okay. Remember 
down here, we said that we needed 1 12 two times to equal 1 sixth, and we needed 1 sixth two times to equal 1 third. So we're going to multiply 2 times 1 twelfth, and then we're adding 2 times 1 twelfth. We multiply by 2 because, like I said, we need 2 twelfths to equal 1 sixth, and then we add it to itself because we need 2 sixths to equal 1 third. So there's one more way that I want to show you how to write this. There's a simpler way we can write our multiplication sentence. We can also write it like this. You know that you need 4 twelfths to equal 1 third. So we can write 1 third equals 4 times 1 twelfth, which equals, you do 4 times 1, 4 twelfth. So that's another way that we can write our multiplication sentence. All right, so this was just an overview of the different types of questions that you might get with this topic. For our next question, we're going to take a look at a specific problem and solve it using the knowledge that we just gained from this example. This next problem states to show that one half is equivalent to four eighths using a tape diagram and a number sentence. So my first step will be to draw a tape diagram and break it into halves. Okay, so here's my tape diagram, and I know that each side equals one half. To show that it's equivalent to four eighths, I need to break this tape diagram into eighths now, just like we did in that last problem. Okay, so now I broke my tape diagram into eights. You always want to count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have our eights and we have our one half. All right, remember my one half I drew in black and my eights I drew in purple. So I'm going to shade in my one half all the way up to that black line, which splits this tape diagram in half. So I can see that I also shaded in four of my eights. So what does this show us? Well, this tape diagram just proved that one half is equivalent to four eighths. We showed that it's equivalent using a tape diagram. And our next step is to make a number sentence. So my number sentence should look like one half equals four times one eighth. And if that number sentence confuses you, I'm linking my last video where I explained how to write multiplication number sentences um, when you're working with fractions. The reason we wrote four times one eighth is because we have one eighth, as you can see, four times. That's where that comes from because each one of those equals one fourth. Okay, but if you need a refresher on that, I'm linking the video. All right, and that's all for today. So I really hope this video helped you. If you're still confused or if you need extra help, please, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help. Leave a comment. Um, please like and subscribe so I can continue to provide free educational videos for you. If you have any requests for my next video, please leave it in the comments. I'm happy to help. All right. Thank you guys. Bye.